She's just joined. Let me see, just waiting for her to connect. because she walked right away back to the house. Yeah. And then I'm in the bathroom and I hear her like really, really quiet. Yeah. And I know when she's really, really quiet, something is going down. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of like peeked out and I looked and then I see this, well, at least she's a chihuahua, so it's small. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A little poop on my carpet in the living room, which I have kind of like a um, area rug. Yeah. And for whatever reason, every dog that I foster needs to poop in that area rug. Interesting. So, anyway. It's something about the scent. I think it's something about that scent in that rug. Now, do you have one of those handy uh, vacuum cleaners with like a spot? Yes, cleaner? I got Good. one recently yeah. to be able to clean and, and, and stuff because mm -hmm. I'm seeing that it's it's uh it's every time so i'm so sorry <laughs> about that <laughs> well me too i have a little dog just laying right next to me she's taking a nap so she, she she's not gonna be bothering us yeah I, I have to close down all the windows and shades because i don't want her like looking at people and start barking and interrupt this interview so i have to shut down all the uh the windows and stuff and everything yeah so Anyway, so I'm glad to see you. When was the last time we saw each other? Was it in 2016 during this Grand International, I believe? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's After already been. October. Wow, yeah. Was, yeah. Oh my God, it's like three years ago. Four, year, four years ago, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> I remember every little detail of that pageant. Oh my God. Yeah, that they kicked us out of rehearsal. Yeah, and there's too much drama going on. Remember, remember Miss Iceland? She had to let go, she had to leave. <laughs> and then she ended up at Miss Universe. Yeah, so, yeah. You know. So that was that was that was one memorable. That was my first Miss Grand International pageant, by the way, and I really really enjoyed it. At first, I was very hesitant, but then again, you know what? I have an open mind. I'm going to give it a chance. I've heard so many bad things about Miss Grand International. You know, I'm going to go there personally and find out myself. And lo and behold, you know, it was awesome. It was great. I was, I was really yeah. surprised. You have to experience it like in Thailand or in another country, which is much more, you know, larger. Because in the U.S., it was more smaller, more contained, because mm -hmm. it's still not very well known in the U.S. since it's not... It's not like Miss Universe that it's live yeah. on national television here in the U.S. Miss mm -hmm. Grand is live internationally in Asia, you know. Yeah. So. And it was the first. Are, it was the first time for the pageant to be held yes. outside Thailand. So, yeah. Yeah. Which is great. So, anyway, people are wondering how in the world did you end up being the national director of Miss Cuba organization. I mean, you sent me a little history about mm -hmm. the, the organization, but I, I wanted more information. How, first of all, tell us about yourself, a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, I'm originally from Puerto Rico. I'm not Cuban, but it doesn't matter if I'm Chinese, Japanese, um, any other country. Um, mm -hmm. It really, it's it's not an issue to be able to handle a national um, franchise. You mm -hmm. don't have to be of, of that descent. Right. Um, I just want to clarify, because I get that a lot. They're like, well, you're not Cuban, you're Puerto Rican, why are you not? And I, and I understand that, but there's many countries that their national directors are not native of that, of that country. And a lot of people don't know that. How I came about with the franchise with Miss Cuba was when I moved from Puerto Rico to Florida in 2005, um, I, was watch I was actually watching the Miss Florida USA pageant. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed was all the Latin girls that were competing that were mainly of Cuban descent or from Cuba, um, they 
either they didn't, they would, they would get into the top five and not advance or actually win. And then comparing to the other girls that were competing for me, I mean, visually, you know how Latin women really command the stage. Right. And yeah. their presence is very, I mean, there is no way that when you look at a pageant, regardless mm -hmm. whether it was a state pageant in the U.S. or internationally, a presence of a Latin woman, even an Asian woman, commands the stage. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, I was always curious on why they weren't advancing and why they weren't giving these Cuban girls the opportunity mm -hmm. to represent Florida you know, at Miss USA, because I was noticing they were still, they were crowning the typical Floridian, you know, the blonde, blue eyed, the blonde, blue -eyed you know, very, yeah. yeah, very, um, I would say cookie cutter. Yeah, image, pretty much. Yeah. You know, of, you know, the typical Floridian, but in reality, Florida is such a melting pot of so many cultures, sure. you know, and, and so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I see all these, you know, Cuban girls stunning, competing. Let me just send out a letter. And I started with Miss Earth, actually. This was in 2007, right? 2007, okay. yeah. Okay. So I sent out a proposal because I had been um, originally a national director for Puerto Rico for Miss Intercontinental, top model of the world previously. So I already had those types of relationships with other international um, franchisees. Mm -hmm. So that networking was already established before I grabbed Cuba. So they already knew my history. They knew my background. They knew that I always sent really, you know, high quality girls to international pageants. So I said, let me, let me see if, you know, cause I was curious also that nobody ever was interested in Cuba. Mm -hmm. And I know it's because of the political background that the island has and nobody maybe didn't want to touch it because of that. But since I'm a rebel, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to see what happens. And I just sent out my proposal and immediately Carousel responded. And they were like, yeah, we would love a Cuban girl, you know, at the pageant. Yeah. And I was like, awesome. Okay. So let's start with this. So that's how I started. Yeah. It was kind of like a fluke more or less. And yeah. then it just developed from there. Um, I, let me tell you, when I started this project, you have no idea how many people told me I was crazy. <laughs> the problem, this, I know this the project was, yeah, literally, they would tell me in my face, you're crazy, why are you getting involved in that? Um, nobody cares about Cuba. Um, it's it, it has such a negative, it had a negative vibe at the time you know, because of the political situation that nobody wanted to touch it. And I was like, you know what? I'm so tired of the negativity from, you know, because whatever happens politically in a country should not determine the quality and the, the people that live there. You know what I mean? Like right. yeah. that I should agree. not That's represent good. its people. Right. And I think, you which, know, bring, which, yeah, which brings us to this question, because a lot of people are asking me, why are the Cuban girls not, not being crowned in Cuba? Why are they being crowned outside Cuba? So would you like to explain that? I mean, yes, I, it's, it's very simple. Right now, um, a lot of people think that the embargo was lifted. The embargo has not been lifted. Okay. Therefore, the embargo with the United States and Cuba have not been lifted. Certain so, restrictions so that's were interesting lifted. Because I see a lot of Americans traveling to Cuba. Yes, certain restrictions were open when Obama was in office. They lifted the travel restrictions. Okay. And um, so it made it much more easier for tourism from the Got U.S. Yeah. into Cuba. Now, I have to clarify, mm -hmm. Cuba has always been a tourist destination for the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. It's just not within the U.S. because of the embargo. A lot of people, you know, since we live in a bubble, you know, here in the U.S., a lot of people think <laughs> that the only tourists they, they were, um, not, you know, 
maybe not receiving were from the U.S., obviously, mm -hmm. but maybe not tourists from other countries when that's never been the case. Right. Um, so Cuba has always been a, a very popular destination for Europeans, for Asians, um, South America, Central America, just not in the U.S. because of the embargo. Mm -hmm. So um, certain things have gotten back to the way it was previously because of the new, you know, the new administration with Trump, et cetera, um, which we're not going to go into that. But um, I, I wanted to clarify because when um, Castro came into power was when they stopped celebrating the Miss Cuba pageant for Miss World and Miss Universe. Okay. Um, they decided to eliminate that. And it was eliminated for many, many years until I started um, sending girls mm -hmm. from Cuba that live in the, in the U.S., yes. But I, um, these are Cubans that hold dual citizenship. Um, because certain um, licenses require me to send a girl that has dual citizenship, some don't. Okay. Um, so I have that, that option to send either a Cuban girl that was born in the U.S. or a Cuban girl that was born in Cuba um, that live in the U.S. to the pageant. That's okay. not, you know, it's, it's never been an issue. Right. Um, things have opened up more now that they have internet um, they know about the international pageants now that Cuba's been competing since 2007. We've been um, placing, we've been actually winning a Grand Slam pageant, which we mm -hmm. did with Miss Grand International in 2014, yeah. which was our first major title mm -hmm. since I started the project. And which that's really special for me because that really opened up that Pandora box of all those people that were right. negative yeah. about it exactly and now yeah. they're saying oh wait a minute hmm maybe this is something here you know right. yeah so so yeah it's it's been i could tell you from the beginning it was only me i was gearing i was doing this project by myself i really didn't have that much um resources, backup, yeah. resources very limited resources um Again, a lot of people didn't believe in the project yeah. until we started sending girls. And then little by little, you know, word of mouth, they see the pageants on, you know, internet, they see the quality of girls competing. Yeah. So, um, so how do you, I know, uh, have you had an actual physical pageant? I did last year. Okay. Um, what we did was we did a um, team pageant and then we crowned the Miss because we already had designated um, girls for the titles. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like did it that way. We had more teams than Miss last year. This year we didn't do anything because of the pandemic. Everything kind of like shut down. So we hopefully will go back into doing the pageant next year. Um, if God willing, you know, depending on, right. Yeah. On how everything the, the, the goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we have, there's an interesting comment by someone and there, and well, you want to respond to this. It says you scammed the Cuban contestant in this grand and multiple more. You aren't even Cuban. <laughs> okay. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this really, you know, I if I really need to respond to this ridiculous comment because it's really ridiculous. Um, Just make make them go away. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this, okay? When a girl decides to compete in a pageant, they have to understand that this is not just a crown and a sash. This is a job, okay? You have a team of experts working um, with each girl for their pageants. We have mm -hmm. a team in place. We have um, a life coach, a pageant coach. We have a personal trainer. We have hairstylists. We have designers that work with our girls. 
Um, so we have a whole team. Each girl that comes in is aware of their responsibilities as a title holder. Well, and they do have to. Yeah, they do have to sign uh, a contract, right? Exactly. Yeah. They all yeah. sign a contract with the responsibilities, um, and what we bring to the girl, like you know what we need from her and what we plan on giving to the girl. Correct. Um, we don't. We're not in the business of scamming anyone because we do everything legally by legally bound because of a contract. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because the girl doesn't place, and this happens every year because you see it regardless the country. Right. Um, they tend, a lot of fans and people that don't know the business blame the organization because the girl didn't place. Right. Yeah. Oh, it, it's when you compete in a pageant, you have to go with, with, um, either, understanding that you might place you might not place but you have to go well prepared um we can only do so much for a girl mm -hmm. in regards to training it's always i always say it's always up to the girl whether she really wants it or not right to put in now, yeah. the work um the Cuban delegate from Miss Grand International last year, was it Elaine Gonzalez? Did, she went, didn't she? Uh, yes, she went. Elaine. She competed. Yes. Okay, she, she did had, compete. Yeah. She, yes, she did compete. She had. She was with us for seven months. Mm -hmm. um, during that seven months, she was in training with us, with our pageant coach. She had modeling, catwalk. Um, she had personal presentations in Miami, fashion shows, et cetera, dur during, the, um, during the year. I mean, during the seven months that she was with us, basically. Um, the issue was the following. When you don't want to follow directions or want to listen to your team that is, is giving of themselves to you, Mm -hmm. voluntarily because i have to tell you my team works volunteer they don't get paid for their time they're volunteering their time because they love pageantry and they love the process of mentoring girls to compete in international pageants right okay um i don't live off of pageantry i have a full-time job um so whatever the girl, um, and we don't do a, I have to clarify, we don't do a Miss Pageant, okay? We designate, we do a casting, and we designate the girl. Mm -hmm. um, the girl that goes to their international pageants, so that everybody understands, they do pay a pageant fee like any other pageant to compete, whether it's local, state, whatever. Yeah. Um, that, that obviously that entry fee goes towards the franchise fee that we have to pay yearly. Um, and the travel so, expenses you know, and all that exactly stuff. Exactly. Because it's expenses. Um, so the fact that, um, fans or people say that organizations scams girls, is kind of like ridiculous because they don't understand that a pageant license for an international pageant is extremely expensive. Right. So uh, this, it's the same, it's the same um, anonymous poster. And now they're saying, what about the girl that was supposed to go to Miss International 2019 in Tokyo? Yes. What's the so, story about? In that, yeah. And I'm going to touch on this. And I, I, I don't want to give... Um, too much color to this because that's, you know, it's, it's already passed. Right. Yeah. Um, we had a girl that, um, was assigned to go to Miss International. She was with us for, um, more or less this approximately six months, mm -hmm. um, with us. Um, unfortunately she did not comply with our end of, um, the contract. 
and we were having um our staff was having difficulties with um this delegate okay mm -hmm. um when i when a pageant director decides to um not send the delegate and take away a title it has to have you have to really have a reason why you can't just take away a title just because i got upset with you or for you know non um Compliant. for no reason none whatsoever okay. you know mm -hmm. what i mean um so it was several things that happened to get to that point that as an organization we had to make the decision to not send her mm -hmm. um and this was two months prior to her going to the international pageant. Mm -hmm. She was um, given the um, letter. Um, we had a conversation with her. She accepted the the letter. The the um, and it was it was done. Um, and then after like a month, then she did, she suddenly realized. It was odd because she suddenly realized that she wasn't going to international and then she suddenly um, was demanding to go. Um, I always say that I'd rather not send a delegate than send a delegate that is not going to comply with our, our um, rules and regulations. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, because that delegate not only represents the country, but represents our good organization. Exactly. Yep. And that's one thing that many people don't understand. Um, we had a discussion with Miss International and we had advised them what, you know, the, the procedure, what we were going to do. And they accepted and they were very, you know, and it was a sad, it was a sad outcome. I'm not going to say it wasn't. It's always sad to get to that point. We did give her warnings. We did yeah. discuss the situation with her many times. And it just got to the point that when your staff um, sees indiscipline in a girl, then regardless of how many classes you give or how many, you know, it, it's, the outcome is not going to be good. So I'd rather just not send a delegate um, and just cut ties in a, you know, in a professional manner. Right. And leave it at that. Um, so she was dethroned eventually. Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And then we decided, we, we spoke with International and, and International saying, not a problem. Don't worry about it. Uh, we understand things happen. Since we don't hold a um, pageant, um, then um, uh, what you call it? We don't have like a, one, a first runner up that we could send. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? So again, I, l let me clarify because apparently you, you're not you're not understanding um, whoever is writing there. It um, says your it says your LLC is inactive. You aren't even legally running. Okay. Um, Again, I do not hold a Miss pageant. Therefore, legally in the United States, the Miss Cube organization is my name. I own it. It is inactive because I do not generate any revenue. Okay. I mean, your name, I think the title itself, Miss Cuba organization, is copyrighted, but it's not necessarily trademarked because exactly. you're not you're trademarking it yeah. this year um, because we're having issues with um, uh, some other person that is trying to copy mm -hmm. yeah, and trying to use it. We, so we, we spoke later. with our lawyers, and actually this week, our lawyers is actually doing the um, trademark for the Miss Cuba organization. That's so, great. so, so that you understand, sweetie, that again i don't live off of pageantry pageantry doesn't pay my bills i do this because i already have a reputation more than 10 15 years in pageantry i've sent girls from puerto rico and cuba mm -hmm. we've had 
much success in, in, in with our girls placing in international pageants. We've seen it. Rafa has been there. You've seen it. So there's always bad apples, unfortunately, as part of, you know, part of pageantry. Business. Yeah, yeah. In the business. Anywhere, yeah. You just have to move on. It's, you know, pageantry is not for everybody. A lot of girls think this is super easy and it's not. It's just a lot of work and you have to understand um, that you're representing not only, you know, your country, but you're representing your, the sponsors, the pageant um, organization. And it, it entitles a lot of um, dedication. Mm -hmm. It entitles... Um, a lot of understanding of the process. And um, if unfortunately, a lot of girls don't understand that. Now, you had the Miss Earth franchise for two years, from 2007 till 2009. Three why? years, I had Three it. years. Okay, why, uh -huh. did you, why did you drop the franchise? Um, we parted ways amicably. Um, the last um, delegate that I sent was Jamie Lett. And um, oh, yeah, I remember her. she was stunning. Yes, and I was surprised she didn't even make the cut. I was like, What? I was like, So shocked. Yeah, um, you were the only one was shocked. <laughs> I think all <laughs> Philippines were shocked. We're shocked, because, yeah, because they expected her to place. Yeah, um, I don't know what happened, honestly. I'm I was very, very surprised, um, with. But then later on, I, I heard from a, um, a um, employee that left Carousel Productions um, had mentioned that I had, to, I had to do a lot of politics in regards to Cuba. Hmm. And so that, helped, that supposedly had a lot to do. So, um, so maybe the Cuban government contacted Miss Earth and they told them that you can't. You can't have a Cuban Oh, we had that the first year. We had yeah. the, yeah, the first year that we competed, we had um, the ambassador of Cuba contact Carousel um, trying to ban our delegate to compete at Miss Earth. That happened the first year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, but, so, you know, it. So if Carousel, let's say, contacted you and said, Noemi, we want you back, would you return? We get that every year, though. <laughs> <laughs> we get it every year. Every year they contact me and they're like, we want you back. The thing is, I, I, um, there's so many. Okay, first of all, every year I get invites for a bunch of pageants. And I just have to be particular in which pageant I want to send girls um because again we run with a limited budget again we don't hold a pageant so whatever um you know um girls that compete do have to invest because every girl that competes in a pageant whether they even win their national pageants it's an investment this right. i mean yeah. this is not free the organizations don't don't think that every organization gives everything to the girl the girl has to go out there and hustle mm -hmm. and get their sponsors regardless yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of hard work yeah it's a lot of hard work and a lot of people think oh the organization will give you everything no it, re yeah, it requires a lot of begging you have to beg yes. <laughs> yes. Your knees. oh my god yes <laughs> yes it, it has a lot to do, and you really have to, again, like I said, you have to be in the mind frame of really wanting it. Because if you don't really want this, then it's not going to work out for you. Right, exactly. It really isn't. The outcome that you're expecting is not going to, it's not going to come out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's an investment, and a lot of people don't understand that. They think it's everything is free, and, and no. Nothing yeah. is for free in this world. It, there's always a, a give and take, you know. And so, you know, a lot of girls think, has that mentality of, well, this organization gave this girl, I had one, one year, um, one of my girls said, well, this organization gave um, her all her wardrobe. Well, wow. fabulous. That's great. But we don't have that luxury. 
you know, nowadays designers don't want to sponsor because many of the girls are irresponsible and, and take the dresses and then they don't take care of it, mm -hmm. you know, and then the designer is left with a garment that they can't resell or they can't yeah. continue renting, you know, because of this girl that they sponsored and wasn't responsible. Yeah. So, you know, that happens, that happens a lot. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's happened to me a lot way too many times so this so what i've decided to do with the design with our designers is they um sign a contract directly with the girl whoever is going to the pageant mm -hmm. and i i actually tell them and i was like just have them sign the contract i don't have a problem so that they understand that it's a responsibility to take care of those garments mm -hmm. and take care of whatever you know, either a pair of pants, skirt, blouse, pair of earrings, anything. If it's if it's not returned at a certain amount of time, and not in in and it's not in pristine condition, then the designer has the right to charge whatever they decide to the girl. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty much a basic uh, policy. Yeah, it's a basic right. policy. I I yeah. make. Because a lot of designers, they're like, oh, I don't dare to. And I'm like, no, it's your, it's your work. You need to protect your own work. And they There's also, only so they also have to earn a living, you. you know. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. Wow. So who was the most difficult girl you ever worked with? <laughs> you don't have to answer if you don't want to. You can I'm send me a private say, message if you want to. <laughs> but I could tell you this. I've had difficult girls. I'm not going to lie. There's always girls that you love working with, that you have that rapport and you have that, um, just that, that bond, yeah, bond just, yeah. immediate bond. And then those girls that you don't have that really immediate bond, they'll give you a headache. They hate you because you're, you're, you're wanting them. This is my thing. A lot of people say I'm so strict and I, I, and nothing is good for me in my eyes. That's not the case. The thing is I'm a perfectionist. If I'm going, and I was a delegate, I know, and I've been in their shoes. What is your birth sign? Sagittarius. Okay. I'm between Aquarius. a Sag and a yeah. Capricorn. Okay. Right there. So yeah, Sagittarius um, are perfectionists. Yeah. I like things well done. I don't like things, pardon my expression, half ass. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to do it, do it 110%. If not, don't do it. Right. Um, I am picky because I am picky. Mm -hmm. But I'm picky because you're representing my brand. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you so, have to work the best. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't want, and this is one thing I, I, I always tell the girls, and you've noticed, none of my girls that have competed internationally can say that they looked less than Venezuela or Colombia on stage. Mm. They all look stunning. Mm -hmm. They all have beautiful gowns. Mm -hmm. They always are well put together. Regardless of the budget, they look amazing. You can't really tell if she had a budget or if she didn't have a budget because right. they're all competing at the same level. Mm -hmm. So I always say you don't need thousands of dollars to compete in a pageant. That's not what I'm saying. Oh, it's no, like, not at all. No. You know, you just have to have good taste, mm -hmm. know where to shop. Networking, if you know all your Networking. good friends. Yeah. Networking, go out there, meet people. You know, pageantry is a great way to network yourself if you really want to get out something um, career-wise. You know, I always say, take advantage of the opportunity. It's given to you. You're going to meet so many people, whether it's in communication, television, modeling. If that's what you want to do, network. Don't be shy about it. Now, so you, you've been 
obviously attended all these wonderful, incredible beauty pageants all over the world. Now, mm -hmm. each pageant is looking for a specific look or for a specific type. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you and I know what Miss Grand International is looking for. Now, to those fans out there who are confused <laughs> and who do not know exactly what type of girl Miss Grand International is looking for, help, help us explain why, how, what? Um, Miss, Interna Miss Grand International is kind of, I'd say it's a combination of Miss Universe, Trump error, not MIG era, <laughs> Trump era. Trump era. <laughs> Trump era. Um, Miss World. It's kind of like a, a like a, a a combination of both together. Mm -hmm. I but Miss but but Miss Grand International, I think they they sort of like imitate or they are copycat almost in Miss Universe. They focus on 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 the physical aspect, you know, like big hair. Uh, like tall, skinny, sexy, you know, you don't have to have a brain, but as long as you look good, you're fine. Well, I don't know about the brain part because the <laughs> girls that, that come out of the interview at Miss Grand International, um, I don't know if it's because they're really, really well prepared and they think it, they come out and they're like, oh, it wasn't that hard. Um, <laughs> um, I know I can tell you when Lise um, competed and she had her in um, her interview, she told me it was kind of um, kind of tough because she saw it as kind of like a job interview. Mm -hmm. And I always say to the girls, that's how you need to approach your interview because it is a job that you're applying to for a year. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you really have to go in with that mentality. Mm -hmm. um, you have to have a strong platform to win Miss Grand International. Um, unfortunately, this year, the poor girl that won last year, um, Venezuela, hasn't been able to really fulfill her duties as yeah. maybe Claire has and the rest of the others. Well, you know what? It's, it's interesting you mentioned that because between Miss Grand International from Venezuela and the current Miss Universe from South Africa, I think Miss Grand International is doing more things. I mean, she's oh, actually yeah. out there. I mean, she's in Thailand, yeah. but she's going out in public, you know, not mm -hmm. wearing a mask, mind you, no social distancing. I guess COVID-19 has totally been eradicated in Thailand, <laughs> but she's I, out I there. Think yeah. What I heard was the numbers are really, really low mm -hmm. and they have it under control in Thailand. So that's why you're seeing like nobody with mask and it's more right. kind of like they're so they're actually in the middle of Miss Grand Thailand. I think yeah. it's going to be the Yeah, I've been guest. watching it. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. yeah. So um, th that's the reason why she's able to go out more. But mm -hmm. however, she hasn't been able to travel because of the of the situ current situation. Yeah. Um, Claire, I believe she traveled or Clara um, from Australia, yeah, from Australia. Claire? Oh, uh, Claire, Parker. with Claire, Liz, um, Janely, um, the, uh, Maria, all of them traveled the world, um, and they were constantly traveling. They actually traveled more than, than, than Miss Universe at some, some years. Exactly. Um, but this year, you know, unfortunately, Venezuela wasn't able to travel. But regardless, they've been able to, I could tell you this. Miss Grand International, they have marketing so well put together. I agree. Yep. That, you know, it's, it's I'm still in awe on yeah. the things that they do, honestly, because yeah. their marketing strategy is amazing. And that you can't take away. You cannot take away. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's far better than, than all the other pageants, I think. So, um, yeah, I, I think they're, they're very well organized. Let me tell you, when I first got the proposal from Grand International um, in 2013, I was so in awe with their presentation mm -hmm. compared to proposals that I get from other organizations. 
I, that's why I signed on immediately. And I'm so glad I did. Um, because every girl that I sent has had an amazing, an amazing um, experience with this pageant, regardless whether they place or not. I have not heard any negativity at, at all, all yeah. from the from the girls, um, opposed to other pageants um, that I'm not going to mention that I, I always got the feedback of, well, they didn't feed me. Um, the, the accommodations were not up to par. Um, you know, and, and when, when I get, when I send a girl to those pageants and I get that type of feedback, unfortunately, I don't continue with them because for me, it's very important to give that proper, um, attention to every delegate, regardless right. where they're coming from. Yeah. Um, proper, you know, hotel stay is very important meals i mean well yeah meals and security too security as well uh, yes definitely. That was, you know when, when when we found out that this grand international was going to take place in venezuela i said my first reaction was kind of, really are you sure i mean that country is like the pardon the word s-h-i-t hole of the universe we're sending girls out there what did they get robbed what did they get kidnapped and stuff and everything but you know what nothing happened everything nothing was safe. happened everything nothing was safe. happened yeah. And the pageant's yeah, going to be held again this year in, in, the, in the country, right? Um, no, I, think. Lash, I heard really? it's not going to happen in Venezuela again. This is, this is, mind you, this is rumors. I don't okay. know, because we haven't gotten official word on where it's going to be held or when it's going to be held. Okay, because um, Nawa did mention that when, when it was uh, televised last year's pageant, I remember. Yeah. Um, I guess he changed his mind. Uh, well, things in Venezuela are not that great with COVID right now. Okay. Um, their their numbers are quite high, and um, I believe where they were gonna do it, um, this is what I heard locally and in, in um, in the news was um that where they held the Miss Grand International pageant, they have used that as kind of like a um a COVID center. Oh, Were okay. they there? So I. Yeah, so it's not I'm a good sure idea to get to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe they should just hold it in Thailand. I, I, my, listen, yeah. if they hold it in Thailand, I love Thailand. My, mm -hmm. my experience with, in Thailand was amazing. I went there when Lee's gave up her crown, mm -hmm. and the attention and the fan base is, a, is incredible. The production is unreal. Like, I walked in, I remember walking in because we weren't allowed to go to any of the rehearsals. Mm -hmm. And so when we went for the prelims, I walked in and I was like in awe of the setup, you know, and it was incredible. Let me tell you, their their production, it's, I, it's unfortunately, I can't- It's peculiar it, to Miss Universe. It's, it's just amazing, it's, it's grand, it's really Miss grand. Universe. And yeah. we've been to Miss Universe, and we know the production aspect of Miss Universe, yeah. you know. And we've seen Miss Universe go through, you know, ups and downs financially and how they able to get it together regardless. Um, but, yeah. You know what? If, if I, think I, I think Miss Universe, I, IMG should just sell Miss Universe to Nawa. I'm sure Nawa will, will, will turn Miss Universe into, you know, far better production than it is right now. Oh, could you imagine? Oh my God. <laughs> oh Lord. Okay, oh, so Lord. so you recently acquired the Cuban franchise for a new pageant, which is called the Nuestra Latinoamericana Universal. Yes. I've never heard of that pageant until by accident I was looking into my Instagram and I and I, I followed Osmel Sosa and then he, he he was advertising it. Like what the hell is this pageant? Now could you tell us more about, about the news pageant? Yeah, this is a new pageant that is going to be held actually here in the U.S. Um, okay. It's a Latin in Miami? pageant. In Miami? It's going to be held in Texas and Houston. Okay, great. So um, it's Lupita Jones and Osmer Sosa. Um, everybody knows Osmer Sosa. Oh, my God. Carmen Maria Montiel, Miss Venezuela 1984, that I interviewed two weeks ago. She lives in Houston. And, oh. and she and Osmel are good friends, so she better judge the pageant. 
I'm, I'm, I'm sure she'll be at the event. It's it's Absolutely. gonna be a, a huge event. Um, so they've gotten together and created this new Latin pageant called Nuestra um, Latinoamericana Universal. Um, they're doing actually two pageants. They're doing the one for the U.S. for the U.S. Right, right. Um, and then they're doing the international. So whoever wins the U.S. represents obviously the U.S. and then goes on to the international pageant. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of it's 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 smaller pageant because obviously you know you don't have Asian countries, you don't have European countries competing because it's all like um, Latin America, mm -hmm. basically, and some Caribbean. Um, because I think the only two Caribbean countries that are competing is Cuba and Puerto Rico. Really? Um, no Dominican Republic? Oh, and Dominican Republic. Sorry. Uh, Dominican uh, Republic. Yeah. Um, Haiti is not competing, which I'm, I was surprised. Um, maybe, maybe they will in for, for next year, maybe, because it was going to be held this year because, but again, due to COVID, it was postponed for next year, 2021. Mm -hmm. um, they're looking at either uh, March or April doing the pageant. Um, so yeah, they um, contacted me. They sent me the presentation. Um, I read it over. I, I was kind of like iffy whether to grab another franchise because again, it's really hard to find really good girls to compete at these pageants that have the time, that have the commitment necessary to, to compete. Um, everybody wants to compete, but they don't want to put in the work. Um, right. Now, so would, that, you be, that, would, yeah, would you be open, let's say, to some of your former girls who had competed in other pageants, would you be open to accepting or to, uh, appointing a former? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we, we looked into that as well. The thing is that some of them are, um, are in school Mm -hmm. And there, you know, I have one that just started law school that she's not going to be able to to compete because she can't um, get out of law school for mm -hmm. a long period of time to go and compete. So she's kind of like stopped competing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have girls that work and they can't take, you know, you have to understand some of these pageants require the girls to be um, at least three weeks come, you know, at, let's say for Miss International, it's, it's three weeks. Um, brand, if it's done in Asia, it's three weeks. If three it's weeks done somewhere that, else, weeks. it's kind of like two weeks. Two weeks yeah. When it was here in the US, I think it was like a week and a half. It was pretty short, very short. It was very short. Yeah. That was the shortest one. That was the shortest one. Um, so it's hard when they work because not every job is going to give you a month leave to mm -hmm. go compete. That's so true. that's another thing that a lot of the girls, yeah. you know, have problems in, in competing at these pageants because they have to leave for long periods of time. And then sometimes they have to just stop working yeah. and just compete and then come back. It, it's really hard. People think that it's very easy to just go and, and compete internationally, but they don't understand the long periods of time mm -hmm. that they have to be away from either school or work. And, and mm -hmm. it's a hard decision, especially when they're, they have to pay their rent. They have bills to pay, yes. you know? That's true. So. Now you also send girls to Miss Supra National, correct? I haven't sent, I, um, the last time I sent was a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, we were looking to send last year, um, but the girl that we, again, the girl that we had um, discussed going um, after she said yes, um, at the time that we were going to sign the contract, she backed out and decided not to compete. Mm -hmm. um, we get that a lot girls that want to and then the last minute they, yeah, they, they realize they, they can't commit themselves yeah yeah they can't commit so have you been to a Miss Supernational pageant have you attended no one? I haven't I that's one one pageant I haven't been to I haven't been to international yet mm -hmm. I was going to go last year I had my hotel reserved 
I had everything reserved and I was all excited to go to Japan. I had a, like an itinerary of places I wanted to go see and visit. And um, I did like major research. I was like, oh, there's like a Hello Kitty um, <laughs> house over there. And I was like, I told my, my, hairdresser, my hairdresser that was gonna go with me, we're like, there's a Hello Kitty house. We should go there. And we like, <laughs> we were like making. Well, I've, I've, nev I've, I've never been, to, I've never been to Miss International and I've always wanted to go. Actually, yeah. they were, they were going to celebrate their 60th anniversary last year. Yes. Because of the COVID, they had to push back for a year later. Why don't we plan it? Why don't we go together? So Yes. I think let's do it. it. Yeah. We'll, oh. we'll take one of those bullet trains, you know, from oh my God, <laughs> yes. all, all over the country. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. That yes, yes, fun. yes. That will be so much fun. Now, okay. So there's a timer here. It says you only have one minute and 15 seconds remaining. <laughs> Otherwise, okay. you're going to shut us down. Nobody knows that you competed in this Puerto Rico pageant. <laughs> and I had so much fun watching the video clip of your performance that you sent me. <laughs> um, now, what, what year was this? What year was that one? Okay, fine. <laughs> Who won? <laughs> Who won that year? Who won? Okay, let's put it this way. It was in the 90s. Okay, that's A lot I of hairspray, a lot of teasing. You know, so but you know what? I, I am loving the bangs. I'm loving. You're liking, okay, I'm this loving is the new bangs. for this year. I was like, let me let me do something. Bangs, different. bangs are back, people. Yes, bangs are back. Yes. <laughs> Listen, I really uh -huh. enjoyed this chat. We're gonna we're gonna continue this chat, you know, in, in the near future. But thank you so much for your time. And I think the fact that you were able to explain all these little, you know complaints and whatnot, I think that gives our viewers a far better understanding of who you are and what your organization represents. So I can't thank you enough so much. So no, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.